Hello, what's up? I'm Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create stunning images in Adobe Lightroom. So I've been here in Spain, I took some really beautiful pictures of some really beautiful locations and right now we'll be showing you how to do the same thing with your photos. So I shot my photos in RAW, I would really recommend you if you have the possibility of shooting RAW to shoot your photos in RAW. It has so much more information in these photos and yeah you just can do a lot more things with it. I always like to edit my photos, that's just my personal style, but if you don't have the possibility to shoot RAW, uh, just shoot in JPEG and you still can do a few of these things but not as much as in this video. If you want to follow along with the same kind of image you can download my photo with the link in the description while well, the raw version of this photo and as you can see my photo is a RW2. This is the raw format for my Panasonic GH5. Um, if you have a different kind of format it should work in Lightroom. Most of the cameras are supported in Lightroom uh, so yeah, if you don't have the crazy unknown cameras, it should work. So let's open up Lightroom right here. And right here I'm in my library. The first thing that you should do is go to import and import your image or images, depends on whatever you have. Browse to the image file, so that's at my desktop. And right here you'll see that you have your image. I will click import and as you can see on my image, um, well, once it's imported, I'm actually going to develop so you can actually see my image um, in full screen. Well, not full screen, but bigger than it used to be. Um, okay, so as you can see my image right here, you'll see that my shadows are really dark and my highlights are pretty much on point. The reason why I've done that is because I didn't have a tripod. If you have a tripod, you can shoot HDR, which means high dynamic range, and then you can take a picture for the high exposures, the low exposures, and combine them. If you want a tutorial on that, let me know in the comments below, and I might make a tutorial on how to create really nice HDR photos. But right here, I didn't have a tripod, so I could only take one photo, and then I actually prefer to focus on my highlights and leave my shadows as is, uh, so they're pretty dark, because you can still bring up your shadows. If you overexpose your image, it's really hard to bring it back, to bring the information back. Because I'm using a raw format here, I can still bring my shadows back and it's going to look pretty good. So that's why I chose my highlights over my shadows. So right here in Lightroom, in the Develop tab, you'll have all your settings right here. You can see that I already have some presets right here. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. I won't be changing my white balance. I don't really think that's necessary for this kind of shot. I'm also not going to touch my exposure, but I'm going to lower my contrast to something like minus 30. For the highlights, I'm going to bring them maybe down to something like minus 30 as well. And for the shadows, I'm going to bring them up actually. So I'm going to bring them up to 80 and you're going to see that we already have a lot more information in our image here. For the whites, you can bring them up something like 10. We can actually look at the histograms right here for our information. We just don't want to overexpose our image here. So uh, maybe the highlights, we can actually bring them up a little bit more. Um, maybe like, yeah, okay, minus 10 is still okay. For the blacks, I'm also going to increase them by 10. So we have, um, yeah, we don't have actual hard blacks. And then for the clarity, this is a really cool feature. I really love to work with clarity. It's really powerful for landscape photography. It's going to sharpen your image, but it's also going to make it look like it's popping more. Um, it's completely different than actually sharpening your image, but I wouldn't recommend using this if you're shooting like uh, portraits. Um, it's actually going to make it really ugly if you're shooting a person, depending on the style you're trying to achieve. But for landscape, it works so well. Or for anything else, product photography, it works well. But if it comes to people, it doesn't always work. So for the clarity, I'm going to bring it to something like 85 and you're going to see what it's actually doing. It's already looking incredible, just adding a little bit of clarity. You see that it's really popping your image and actually uh, we can reset that by double clicking. So if you want to reset one of these settings, just double click on the knob here and that's going to reset that individual setting. So you can actually introduce it again and see what it's actually doing to our image. It's beautiful. The saturation, I'm not going to touch that. The reason being is saturation brings up all the colors and I don't want to bring up all the colors um, because I don't think that really works 
For realistic um, results, I prefer to work with Vibrance. It's going to leave the oranges as is and it's going to bring up all the other colors. I think that looks a lot better than just using saturation. And just for a preview, I'm going to bring up my saturation. And you can see that my orange tones really are yeah, starting to, to become ugly and not that great. So I'm going to reset that by double clicking here. I'm going to introduce the exact same amount for the vibrance. You're going to see that my image already looks a lot better. So you can see that my oranges still are similar to the original colors, but still my image looks a lot more saturated. So vibrant, something like 90, and then we can drag it down right here. For the highlights, we can bring up the highlights a little bit like so. Maybe add a little bit more light, but not too much. Don't exaggerate here. Maybe 50 for the highlights and 15 for the lights. The darkness, I'm also going to bring down the darkness to something like minus 15, but I'm going to bring up my shadows to uh, contrast that to something like 50. So now I have a nice, high dynamic photo. It looks great in my opinion. And uh, we can actually go down right here. Here we can do a lot of cool things. Uh, playing with the hue, you can actually shift your colors to make them look better. So it's a stylistic choice. It's not going to be completely realistic, but sometimes a specific orange tone, if you slightly change that orange tone, it's going to look so much more stunning. So I really love to work with these hues here. So I'm going to bring this maybe a little bit more to the left and you can actually see that what it's doing. We don't really have that much um, reds in my scene, but you can see what it's doing right here. For the orange tones, you're going to see a bigger difference. Let's shift our orange to the right. You're going to see that our orange becomes yellow and to the left is going to become red. This is the original orange, but if we shift it a little bit to the left, I think that we get a little better tones. Same goes for the yellows. We can actually play a little bit more to the left. So our flowers get this nice tone. For the greens, you can also play around with the greens. If you bring them to the left, actually, and you have shot like a nice landscape full of green grass, and you actually want to dry out the grass, you can actually shift your green to the left. It's going to become yellow, and you're going to get the ID of dry grass. So that's also a really cool technique that you sometimes might use. I'm actually going to bring them a little bit more to the left as well. And for the blues, I actually want to shift them to the left as well, because what we want to do with blues, and actually what I like to do with blues, honestly, if you look at movies and you want to get that cinematic shot, you're going to see that their blues are not always blue. It depends on the movie, but a lot of Hollywood movies, they actually shift their blue and they introduce a little bit of green. That's going to make it, well, it's going to give it that really cool blue color. You can see that if we shift the blue to the left, uh, well, to the right here, um, this is like original blue. And right here we get this kind of cyan look. This is a little bit too much, but I think these colors look a little bit better in my own opinion. So it completely depends on you. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Experiment with this, guys. It's not an exact science. So really go overboard. Every single photo also needs different kind of edits. So uh, yeah, just play around with them. If you have some really cool results, definitely link your image in the comments so I can see what you can come up with. Okay, so the hue, I think we're done here. You can actually uh, toggle this on here and off. So we can see this is after, this is before. I think my colors, uh, the shifted colors look a lot better, as you can see right here. The separation, I'm also going to play a little bit with that. I'm going to leave the reds as is. The orange, I'm going to bring them like to 30, 35 maybe. And um, yeah, a little bit higher. The yellows, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Same for greens. And that's it. In the luminance, you can actually bring up the highlights of each individual course. That's also really cool. I don't really use it too often. It really depends on the image. But if you want to brighten up a part of your scene, like you want to brighten up your greens and your yellows, uh, you can actually see what it's doing to your image. It's going to brighten up these, uh, these colors. So that's also really cool. Maybe for the blue, you can do the same thing or actually darken it and you can see what it's doing. Of course, you're going to get, uh, you're going to lose a lot more detail if you exaggerate with these things. Let's continue to split toning right here. And for the highlights, what you can do here, it's actually not going to look at each individual color. It's going to look at the highlights and the shadows. So we can actually bring and introduce some color to the highlights in specific. And what I like to do in the highlights, especially because it's a sunset, I like to go to like the orange kind of uh, part of my highlights. And then I want to introduce the saturation. So that's going to introduce our color. You can see what it's doing here. So right now you can actually see that we have a lot of reds. I'm going to actually bring it maybe a little bit more to the orange because, well, actually I kind of like the reds here. 
And what we can do now is actually with the shadows, we want to use some complementary colors to our image. So if we use like orange, we can go towards the blues. It's a complementary color and it's going to add contrast to our scene and it's going to make it pop a little bit more. So it's my personal preference. You can actually see if we introduce our saturation here, these are the red colors and you can shift them and you can see what it's actually doing. So I kind of like these kind of uh, blue tones here. And now I'm going to bring down my saturation like so. And now we can see before, well, if we click here, this is before and after. Really cool. Okay. For the detail, you can actually add sharpening to your scene. Don't exaggerate with this. Maybe you want to add a little bit more sharpening. And right here, you will see a detailed part of your image. You can still like uh, move it around if you want to. You're also going to see that you have a lot of noise. The more sharpening you are going to add, the more noise you're going to get. What you can do to counter that is play a little bit with the noise reduction. Again, don't exaggerate with the noise reduction because it also softens your image. So it's kind of um, working in two ways here, but we can also like increase our detail here so we don't lose that much detail in our image. It's kind of like a threshold. For the lens corrections, I don't really need lens corrections because I already shoot on a really great lens. I'm using the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter of 2.8 and it's a really great lens if I'm going to enable these. It should automatically correct your lens, but I don't need it as my lens is already really good. But if you should like with a with a GoPro and you would like enable profile corrections, it's just going to enable, uh, well, it's going to flatten out your image and you can do a lot of cool things here, but I suggest you just check it out. It depends on the camera that you're using, the lens you're using. So um, yeah, just play around with that. For the vignette, you can play and add some vignette or highlights here. Um, I'm not going to do that because I actually like my scene to be bright overall here. So for landscape photography, I'm not going to use vignetting too much. And camera calibration, I barely touch that as well. Okay, so this is my image. It looks great. Maybe you want to do like a little bit of, well, a little bit more things. Maybe if your horizon is not aligned properly, you can click over here and actually rotate it a little bit like so. And that's going to rotate your image. I'm going to undo my, well, my edit here. And as I have shot my image, originally my camera takes my photos in four by three, but I want my result to be 16 by nine mostly. But here I can still bring back a little bit of my information of my scene. And uh, this is just because of my camera. It might be different for you, uh, but I actually like it to be four by three uh, for this image. And then right here, we can click on this here, and this is going to enable a gradient. If you're going to click like right over here, and we're going to drag it to the bottom like so, we can drag this over here. And now we can actually individually um, or add it like our top part of our image. So for the exposure, we can actually bring down our exposure and make it like a real sunset. Uh, we can introduce the saturation or take it away a little bit. You can play around with these things. You can also increase the temperature and maybe add a little bit of nice uh, kind of purple colors. And as you can see, if we're going to enable and disable this, uh, this gives a, a big difference to your scene here. For the clarity, you can increase that again here for the uh, for the sky. So you can do some really fun things. Uh, as you can see, it really changes your scene completely. I actually think this is a great result. Once you're done, you can play around with all these settings. You're done. You just click on this button. Done. Okay. So this is your final image. The only thing that we need to do now is actually export our image. To do that, you can actually go down here on your image. And if you have more images, you can select all of them using Shift. Uh, but I'm going to right click here, export, and I'm going to export my image like so. I'm going to choose a destination, so that's my desktop right here, and I'm going to uh, disable, put in subfolder. I'm just going to export it with the same exact name that my raw image has, and now it's going to export it right here. You can see uh, that it's exporting our image. And then it should come on our desktop, and we can actually see the final results. So um, yeah, let's wait for it. There we go. And here on my desktop, uh, if you double click on this, this is our final image and it looks great. I really enjoy playing around with Lightroom. I love editing my photos. It just allows you to do so much more things and it allows you to stylize everything that you take. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.